So this week's crazy medical story is about a case that I had recently. After 23 years of practicing, this was the first case of this condition that I've ever had. And I thought it would be interesting to share the story with our young physicians so that you can at least keep this on your differential diagnosis. Welcome back to another episode where I help younger physicians decrease stress and increase income by transitioning from corporate to independent practices, even without any business experience. So what you're going to learn from this story is that uh, you'll learn some symptoms of a disease that we should probably know in the United States, uh, how it presents, and uh, the, the worst complications that you can get from it. So the case is, is about a 64-year-old male who presented to me after a month and a half of symptoms of confusion, headaches, weakness, and had a workup in Mexico. He was living in Mexico and uh, wasn't sure what was going on and went to doctors down there. They did a CAT scan of the brain and it didn't show anything. He wasn't a drinker, didn't do drugs and was um, fairly healthy prior to this, except for a history of diabetes and hypertension, no other medical problems. His symptoms got worse. Um, his symptoms got worse, and it included ataxia. He started to have the inability to walk. He started to get confused and severe muscle weakness, and uh, the, he just continued to deteriorate his symptoms over the course of a month or so. So knowing that he was in Mexico, knowing that the care down there might not be as good as the United States, I said, hey, why don't you have the, the patient come to the United States? And um, he was transported to the U.S. via regular uh, airplane uh, in a wheelchair because he could not walk. And prior to this, he was actually a long-haul truck driver. And uh, so he was very functional and um, completely with it. So this came to a surprise um, to the family. And so when he arrived to the United States, he came to Tampa, and uh, he was able to be uh, seen by one of our uh, cardiologists because for some reason they put him on propafenone in Mexico, and we still couldn't figure out why he was put on propafenone. But we thought that he might have had an arrhythmia, maybe a, a small stroke that we couldn't determine. And um, lo and behold, he went to the cardiologist. And the cardiologist recommended that he be directly admitted to the hospital. So he went into one of our local hospitals and uh, had a complete workup, saw a neurologist. And because he was coming from Mexico, we said, hey, you know, why don't we, we consult an infectious disease doctor? Because every single test that we sent was negative, from Lyme titers to CBC to even HIV tests uh, were all negative. And our neurologist said, you know what, why don't we do a lumbar puncture? Because... Not only was he having these symptoms, but he's also having some signs of encephalitis and, and confusion. So, stayed in the hospital for 24, I think it was 48 hours in the hospital, had a lumbar puncture, had every single blood test known to man, um, and everything came back negative. So, we were still unsure, so he was discharged home. And a couple of days after discharge... We got a call from the neurologist, and the titers for West Nile virus came back positive in the cerebral spinal fluid. He was positive for West Nile virus with a high IgG, with a low IgM, and that was the first case of West Nile virus that I've ever seen in my career in 23 years. So I had to do the research, of course, and come to find out that many of his symptoms were were basically listed on the different on the uh, symptoms of West Nile virus, but his was more complicated. And from what I could tell, from what I researched, one percent of patients with West Nile virus will get severe symptoms, including memory loss, hearing loss, difficulty walking, uh, gait disturbances, um, abnormal reflexes, uh, depression, and uh, he does not recall being bit by a mosquito. Uh, but in Mexico, there are mosquitoes in Mexico, so. Uh, this was a very interesting case, something that was not expected and something that didn't, didn't even come um, uh, to our, uh, we didn't figure this out until he was actually discharged from the hospital. So uh, he did a fully, he was fully recovered from this West Nile infection and uh, 
started driving truck after three or four months. And this person was actually my father-in-law. And so this was something that I had to, to really take care of because it's my wife's father. And uh, he gave us permission to share the story. And I wanted to share the story with our young physicians to let them know that, hey, when you have a patient that comes in with ataxia, um, that should be a differential diagnosis. Uh, so that you're not uh, led down the path of maybe this is alcohol-related, maybe this is a stroke-related. And of course, all those things need to be ruled out, but West Nile virus should be on the differential. So and that's this week's crazy medical story, West Nile virus. So hopefully this is helpful to you, and hopefully this will add to your differential diagnosis uh, repertoire for patients who come in with similar symptoms. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to these crazy medical stories. And don't forget to subscribe and follow this podcast on your favorite podcast app so that you'll never miss an episode.